Hey everybody. Okay, so as some of you know, uh, I recently had to trade in my Chevy Silverado. The transmission failed and I decided to downsize from a full-size truck after 25 years of driving a full-size truck. Uh, I've had a Silverado, I had two Silverados actually. Um, and I had a Chevy Avalanche and I've had a Tundra. Uh, so I, I don't know, gas prices, the type of driving I'm doing these days, uh, the things that I'm using my truck for, uh, all demanded that I, I downsize to a midsize truck. And the one issue that I had with the midsize trucks was interior space. And uh, I looked at them all. I looked at the Tacoma, the new Tacoma. Uh, I looked at the uh, Ranger. I looked at the uh, Colorado. Um, I didn't look at the Canyon, but they're the same thing, Colorado Canyon. Um, mostly the same thing. And uh, did I look at any others? I don't know if I looked. Oh, and I looked at the Nissan Frontier. And uh, I ultimately decided on my Honda Ridgeline. And I've now owned it for a month. And I've got a little over 1,700 miles on it. And so I thought I should come out here and give you my thoughts on the truck uh, now that I've you know, spent some time with it and uh, I've been living with it for the last month. Uh, give you an honest, uh, my honest opinion on how this truck has been for me, how I've adjusted to it, uh, how I've adjusted going from a, a full size to a mid size truck. Um, some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. Um, you know, I just thought I'd come out here and uh, you know, tell you what I think of the truck. I'm not going to go over the specs of the truck. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of videos, professionally produced videos out there right now that go over all those things. So I'm, I'm not going to go over the horsepower and the torque specs and, you know, uh, the engine. And Like, I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to do a walk around of the truck. I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like, what I'm changing, what I'm keeping, what, you know, any modifications I might do, things like that. And, uh, that's it. Uh, this is an honest review. This isn't a professional review from uh, like a truck or auto reviewing uh, website. This is just, just a regular person telling you what I think about the Honda Ridgeline. So uh, let's go outside, take a walk around, and we'll talk more. Okay. Uh, first, let me tell you, where am I? Uh, I'm working right now, and I've got a little bit of gap in my schedule uh, I got about an hour to kill, so I just decided that I'd come over and visit my parents at the cemetery uh, since I was close by, and I thought this would be a nice place to do this review. Uh, so, first let me tell you, I have a 2024 Honda Ridgeline, and this is the RTL model. And let me tell you, uh, the RTL wasn't my first choice in trim level. I was looking at either the Ridgeline uh, trail sport or the black edition uh, and if you're familiar with the ridge lines or you're uh, researching the ridge lines now you probably have become aware that there was a stop sale order on many of the current ridge line inventory uh, due to a safety recall on I, what I believe is a wiring harness for the rear safety camera I think that's what it was uh, this truck was built after that recall, so it was built with the fix already in it, and uh, my circumstances demanded that I get a new vehicle quickly, and this was the only one that was available. Uh, I did get lucky. It was the color I was looking for, uh, just not the trim level, but it did work out in my favor because uh, I saved some money. Uh, the RTL is obviously a cheaper trim. And I'm discovering that some of the features that I thought I wanted or needed, I, I don't really need. So uh, this model here is the RTL and it's in the Sonic Gray Pearl. Uh, it's a really nice color. And some of the things that I did is I blacked out the tailgate, uh, the ridge line. That was uh, something that I did myself. I just bought the letter kit for a hundred bucks and put them on myself. Uh, I also removed the chrome Honda badge and put on a black Honda badge. Uh, 
I just think the black out look is nicer. Uh, and then I put on a, a soft roll up tonneau cover by North Mountain. Uh, if you know this truck, you already know the tailgate comes down like a regular tailgate. It is not dampened. And so uh, that's kind of a downside, but I'm not sure if the reason that it's not dampened is because it's a dual action tailgate and it opens up like a door. And maybe it's just not possible to put a dampened tailgate in uh, and give up this, you know, otherwise you might give up this feature. I'm not sure, but whatever, I, I can live with it. I, I love that this door opens like this and I love the storage space underneath. It is just fabulous. There's so much space. This thing is, is so deep. Uh, I've got, a, I got so much stuff in there right now and there's still plenty of room in there. So uh, that, in my opinion, is probably the best feature of this truck. Uh, and it's also a steel lined composite deck. Uh, really, really solid. Uh, you got cargo lights in here also, as you can see. And uh, yeah, that's one feature. That's probably the best feature of this truck. Uh, I thought I was gonna light, I thought I was gonna be disappointed in the wheel choice. Uh, these wheels are growing on me. These are a silver uh, wheel. I thought I'd prefer the black wheel, but I think I actually like them. Uh, I thought I might want to change them out to a black wheel, but I like them. Um, I wish that this chrome trim was black, but I'm not going to sweat it. Uh, I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, I may tint the front uh, passenger and driver's side window slightly. And one thing I'm definitely going to do in the next couple weeks is I'm going to change out this chrome uh, grill garnish and put the black one on it because that's just cosmetically it's what I want and I am considering doing a lift kit uh, not a lift kit but a leveling kit uh, the J Sport leveling kit uh, is about 400 bucks uh, my regular mechanic said he's installed them before and he could do it for you know two to three hundred bucks at max um, he said it's about about a two to three hour install so uh, I may do the leveling kit. I'm, I'm unsure yet. I'm, I'm looking at maybe putting the side step on the black side steps from uh, Honda. Uh, mostly because I like the way they look, not because I need the side step. But let's go inside and let's talk a little bit more about the interior. Okay, so I'm going to start in the back of the truck. Uh, one thing that my Silverado had, it was a crew cab and it, it had a lot of back space backseat interior space uh i am finding that this out of all the trucks i looked at the colorado the frontier the um tundra uh, not the tundra the tacoma and the um gosh what was the other one the ford um gosh uh, the ford ranger uh, I have found that the interior space in this truck uh, is better than all of them. And that was the main reason that I was interested in this truck. Uh, I have a seven-year-old. He's still, I personally don't think he needs to sit in a booster seat anymore. Uh, he's very tall, but uh, my wife's making me keep him in the booster seat for another year. So uh, he has no problem back here. Uh, the armrest is great. He puts his little cup holder in here, his juice box here. He's got plenty of little cubbies for his snacks and stuff when we're driving. And, uh, you know, the, I, you know, I got my seat all the way back. I, yeah, my knees are touching the back seat, but uh, I got plenty of headroom and I'm fairly comfortable back here if I wanted to stretch out. Uh, my seat is a little bit further back than I would normally keep it when I'm driving. I just had it, uh, I just had it reclined because I was taking a nap. <laughs> so uh, anyways, the interior space in this is very, very well thought out. Uh, I love that the seat comes up, snaps into place, and that it's flat back here. Uh, so, you know, when I take the dog, I can bring the dog bed in and she can just lay down on the floor. Uh, you know, that's uh, there's not much else to say. Uh, I do believe that these, I haven't tried to um, remove them yet, but I believe if you wanted better, yeah, if you wanted better visibility, you could just remove these headrests. But 
uh, I don't need to. I feel like the visibility in the truck is pretty good. Uh, another thing I like about the interior, um, I actually like this interior better than the Trail Sport in the Black Edition interior, uh, just because it's not fancy. It's just it's just a black leather with some white stitching, you know. But anyways, uh, that's what I like about the back seat. Now let's go into the front. Uh, the front seats, very comfortable. Uh, I, I I must say, it's I, I'm, they're surprisingly comfortable. Um, it's got a dual memory position. You can set for like, you know, if my wife wants to drive it, I got mine set on one. My wife hasn't driven it yet, but she could find her position and set hers to memory two. Uh, come on in. We've got uh, auto window um, all around. Uh, front, both front seats are both powered and heated, which is great. So you got the heat here for uh, the driver, and you got heat over here for the passenger. Uh, my my wife will love that. Uh, one thing that's missing in this that I believe is, I'm not sure if it's available on the trail sport but i know it's available on the black edition is a heating heated steering wheel this one's not heated uh i've never had a heated steering wheel so i'm not really missing anything uh i don't really care uh another thing that this does not have that i thought i was going to miss is this does not have onboard navigation uh i really wanted it but you know, the wireless Apple CarPlay has worked flawlessly so far. So I'm just using, you know, the maps on my phone. And, you know, you just, once you get on, you just come up to Apple CarPlay and there's your maps. Uh, you can see, oh, sorry, I should probably get rid of that address. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm using my phone to record this, but the maps are still up. So uh, it's still connected. Uh, works fantastic. Uh, my Pandora shows up. Uh, I've got Sirius radio. I'm not going to put it on right now for copy copyright reasons, but uh, it's got Sirius XM. Uh, they give you three months complimentary. I, I do like Sirius, so I'm probably going to keep it um, and maybe uh, pay to uh, continue. But uh, it's got a whole bunch of stuff inside. You got your, your trips here. You can control it here, and you can control it here. But uh, you know, so if you want to look at trip A, uh, in the 1700 miles that I've had it, I'm averaging 18.6, it says, uh, trip B, that was, uh, I did a trip up to Vermont to pick my daughter up. Like it was like 350 miles round trip. So my MPGs are a little bit higher on right now. It's showing 19 cause 300 of those miles were highway miles. But, um, anyways, so you get your phone. Uh, which will go back into there. You know, it's very responsive, uh, as you can see. And uh, there's no lag time at all. That's fantastic. Um, you know, all your vehicle settings are in here. One thing I will point out, I, I saw a couple people in the forum saying they were disappointed because the tailgate didn't lock. And, you know, with the auto lock or the key fob, and it actually does. You have to go into your vehicle settings and you have to go change it. For some reason, uh, it comes, uh, it comes, I forget where the setting was. Uh, I had to, f I have to go back in and find it. It might be doors and windows, uh, doors, tailgate power locking. So from the factory, it came, uh, I had to go in and enable it. It was disabled. So uh, I, f I found that odd. So my truck tailgate and, and trunk were not locking with, the key fob until I went in and enabled it but um, yeah it's pretty intuitive it, my phone connects every time I get in there's no issues with connectivity and it, there's only so much to say about that it's a tri zone climate uh, so you've got you know the driver and passenger have their own climate control but so does the rear um, the back seat so that's nice uh, it also has a wireless uh, charging port which can be turned on or off uh, I use it a lot works great uh, I thought I was going to be you know I thought I was going to be unhappy with these push button um, transmission controls but 
Uh, I, I still probably would have preferred a shifter, but I've um, gotten pretty quickly adapted to it. So I, I'm not finding them to be an issue at all. Uh, one thing I wish uh, was different was if you hit this off button, that's the auto start stop function. Uh, you can turn it off. I don't like it. I don't like when you stop at a red light and uh, the truck turns off. So you can turn it off, but then it turns itself back on again when you shut the car down and you turn it back on again. Uh, so you have to disable it every time. There is a little a little harness that you can take apart this dash area and you can hook it up and you can disable it uh, more. You can sort of reverse it so that it's the other way around. Uh, so that it, it's auto off and tr you can turn it on when you want. But anyways, I wish that if you turned it off, it just stayed off, but it doesn't. So um, up here on the dash, oh, we got a fly in here. Let's get rid of him. Get out of here, fly. Uh, on the dash, pretty easy. You just hit the home button and then you can, uh, so here's the home button, you hit that. And then you can scroll through all these things like there's the gauge display, right? Uh, you can go back here. You can go up to brightness. No con. If you don't want anything to show, uh, that'll be it. You can get your tire pressure. Uh, you can go up to your maintenance. It says I have 70% oil life left. Uh, there's your all-wheel drive torque distribution. It tells you, like, when you're driving, it tells you uh, where uh, it's sending power to which wheel uh what percentage for each wheel uh I, I haven't really paid attention to it but i suppose that would be helpful if you were like off-roading or something uh navigation this does not have navigation uh onboard navigation so it just shows a compass and then you get your phone settings uh you can go up to your audio settings you can go to your speed and time. That would be like a trip. And then you can go to your fuel range, which is where I keep it mostly. Um, I like I like the, the split dash where it's uh, half analog and half digital. And the cruise control and, uh, you know, the lane keep assist and all that stuff are all controlled here. It's got some paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel to upshift and downshift. Uh, I suppose that would be primarily for towing. Uh, I haven't had to tow yet. And what else can I tell you? Uh, it's got a, it's got a moonroof, which is great. I haven't had one. I haven't had a moonroof since I had my avalanche, which was an 04 and I got rid of it in 2014. So it's kind of nice to have that again. Uh, it's, it also tilts if you want to tilt it up. And that is for the power rear sliding window, which is a great feature. So, uh, I mean, overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this truck. So uh, let me flip the camera around and we'll, we'll wrap up this video. Okay, so my overall uh, impressions of this truck are very positive. Uh, I've... I, I thoroughly enjoy driving this truck. It's so much nicer than the full-size trucks that I've been driving for the last 25 years. Uh, it just, it handles better, it corners better. Uh, it's more comfortable to drive. It's easier to park. It's better on fuel. I mean, by no stretch of the means is this like an incredibly fuel efficient truck. Uh, you know, 18, 19 miles to the gallon around the city. Um, when I did a trip to Vermont and it was mostly highway speeds at around 75 miles an hour, uh, I was getting around 25 to 25 and a half miles per gallon on that trip. Um, so, you know, 19, I'd say 19 city, 25 highway and, you know, maybe 21 combined, I guess. Uh, so, so Honda's uh, stated fuel efficiency is pretty close to accurate, I find. Um, how am I adjusting? Pretty well. Uh, I, I just, I can't believe I was so hesitant. I, I'd been thinking about buying 
a mid-sized truck for a number of years, even before my transmission failed. But my truck was paid for and I didn't want, uh, I, I just didn't want to go spend the money until I had to. So, uh, but now that I've done it, I'm pretty pleased uh, with the choice I made. Uh, I think it was the right choice. I think it's the most versatile mid-size pickup truck on the market right now. A lot of people will say it's not a real truck. It's, you know, it's not body on frame. You know, it's unibody, whoop de doo uh, It's got a pickup bed. It's got more, uh, it's got more payload capacity in the, in the tailgate than most of the other uh, mid-size trucks. So in my opinion, that makes it a better truck uh, or more of a truck. It, it might not be the best off-roading truck. You know, if you want that, maybe the Tacoma is the way you want to go. But if you're someone that drives a lot, which I am, I drive a lot during the day, uh, and you still need a you still need a truck to tow occasionally. And by the way, it's only five thousand pounds. It's not going to tow a ton, but it's going to tow enough for most most homeowners' needs. Uh, but if you're someone that does yard work, mulch, maybe some crushed stone, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe you like to do some camping trips with the kids. This is a really, really solid option. And I, I would recommend not overlooking it because you think it's not a real truck. Uh, but this is my honest opinion of uh, the 2024 Honda Ridgeline. And this is, again, this is the RTL. Uh, doesn't have as many of the bells and whistles as say the Trail Sport or the Black Edition, uh, but it's pretty handsomely equipped for the price range uh, and we all know that vehicles are way overpriced uh, these days anyways but for what you get I think this is a much better value than any other truck mid-sized truck on the market so uh, if you have any questions drop a comment like and subscribe I'm uh, you know I haven't been posting as many videos lately so uh, but I'm, I'm trying, I just, you know, family and work and it's hard to, it's hard to think of content, you know, it's hard to come up with stuff, but, uh, I'm not a, I'm not by any stretch of the means a YouTube content creator. I just, uh, post videos that I think are helpful for other people. So, uh, anyways, that's my, my overview. I don't want to say a review. This is just my opinions, my thoughts on the Honda Ridgeline. I hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you on the next one.